George Flanagan, Mark Dunning and Lee Greenwood and the coaching staff have obviously done a, a review of the, the Keefley game. How uncomfortable was it for you as a player to sit through that and talk about it? Yeah, it was difficult, Mick. Um, obviously, the week leading up to the game, I, the preparations and, and, and everything were just the same as any other, but obviously a bit more added incentive in there as being a bit for local derby. Obviously, me being a Bradford lad, I tried bringing it up to the lads as much as I possibly could. And, you know, yeah, we've digest, uh, digested it all now, and uh, it's very disappointing because we know where we've set ourselves in the standards this year that they were well below. Uh, I did mention to the players, you turn up at, you know, all below 80 90 percent in the, uh, in this division, you're going to get your you're going to get your backside slapped up, and I think that's exactly what we we got. And, and I'm not doing I'm not you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We got ourselves uh, into a, a dark hole, and we couldn't get out of it. But. Yeah, we've had some uh, some reality checks this week, and uh, hopefully we can kick us on now going forward. When you look at like the cultural changes that have been well documented and made public by Mark and players like yourself in that leadership group, what do you put that down to? What happened on Sunday? Is it a case of rabbit in the headlights? Is it underprepared? How's that result come about? No, I don't think it's any of them, Mick. I just don't. I just think that we turned up there thinking it's going to be. Do you know, I walked, we walked out into before the game and we could sense the atmosphere were going to be great. We talked about the atmosphere going to be great. There was nothing what Keithley did what didn't surprise us. Do you know, we prepared as, as, as exactly how they played and, do you know, we just got to the game and, and I, just, I just think we just got caught up in the moment and, like I say, we went out for warm-up and, and our fans started cheering and it was a really, really good buzz and I thought, here we go, we're on here. And the warm-up were really good in the game, the preparation during the week were really good. Dunno did his did his stuff what he does normally on a normal weekly basis so the preparation and everything like that were just it was it was it was spot on but um, yeah we just didn't turn up mate we got out enthused and that's some of what we've we spoke about as a group uh, and as a leadership group to really put, uh, bring it home to these boys that we you know we don't perform like that again this season you saw a reaction after a poor performance against york i'm guessing it goes out saying george a lot of eyeballs from the supporters will be on the players on the field on Sunday against the Midland Hurricanes, expecting a similar sort of uplifting performance. Yeah, I think you've got to make, you know, and I know you spoke about York there, but I think this key for the game were worse than York. Uh, you know, we just, we just want out the races at all, and uh, it's and as a rugby league player, you you know, you sometimes you dwell on it too much, and uh, it's all about the next performance, and I, I definitely think so. This week is a perfect opportunity for us as a group to regain some confidence, regain some combinations and uh, and see how we go. But uh, from a culture and a standards point of view, we were definitely below standards on Sunday. Uh, and all we can do now is just look forward and uh, see where can, the season can take us because it's a, an exciting one and I'm, I'm really excited about how it's going, but obviously disappointed with the Sunday's performance. Mark mentioned a, a lack of sort of organisation and, and experience was a contributing factor o o on Sunday, obviously. Well documented, no Brad England, no Bowden Thompson, no Michael Lawrence. Does that put a bit of strain on players like yourself, Jordan Lilly, when there's only two of the leadership group out there on the field? Yeah, you can do, Mick. And you know, like you say, you just mentioned a few players what are missing there, and uh, you know they're they're really you know they've been there, done that, wore the t-shirt. So uh, and obviously, lost Kieran Gill who's a big asset for us as well. So we lost him early doors. So yeah, as a, as, a, as, a, as a player, I think we were just all trying to play individually rather than collectively and uh, that's what we spoke about. So you know, we'll, we'll get these players back in uh, and you'll see a change in, in leadership and a, a, a real direction in, in how we want to go this year and hopefully we can uh, kick on. It's a Challenge Cup on Sunday, George. Well documented. You, you haven't got many more seasons left in the, uh, the legs. Um, there's a realistic opportunity at Bradford progressing in the Challenge Cup and also the the 1895 Cup. Yeah, yeah, like I said, we've set, we've set goals and standards this year and one of those goals is the 1895 Cup. I'm not going to say we're not. Um, you know, we're, I think every team left in the competition is probably striving for that. Um, but we're, yeah, we're looking forward to the Midlands. We can't look too much ahead of that. We can't go disrespecting Midlands. We're going to give them the respect they deserve at the end of the day they're in the Challenge Cup. They're still a semi-professional outfit, uh, just like us. So. Yeah, we'll give him every respect and uh, if we can progress and then obviously it'll be Halifax or Barra in the next round and, and that'll be another big test for us to get to that semi-final of that 895 and obviously to the round six of the Challenge Cup where potentially we could get a Super League team and really test ourselves against some of the best in the competition in, in the country. So yeah, we're definitely looking forward to it and uh, let's see what uh, how we unfold. The game's obviously been switched towards Sul because Midlands can't accommodate the, the large 
Bradford support base, and um, obviously that is a help and very familiar based on the fact you've won five games at home already this term. Yeah, like I say, Mick, don't want to let's talk about it too much, but last year we had a disappointing home run, didn't we? But this year we're really treating it as a fortress. Uh, it's going to be a tough place for people to come, and that's some of what we want. Um, and obviously the, the 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 switch this week is is is. Probably, I think some of the gate as well goes to Midland, so it's fair play to them because probably they couldn't facilitate Bradford fans away, but uh, they'll get a bit of money out of it as well, which is, is a pleasing thing because it's only good for the game and helping the you know the lower t lower league teams and bringing them on. But yeah, as home is Oddsall and that's where we like to play and, uh, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be a tough team to beat there. Last round against your KCOM, both you and your young lad uh, George Flanagan Jr. Yeah. both featured a uh, chance that that could happen again this weekend. How special are these moments? Yeah, they're, they're, they're very special, mate. You know, I won't, I won't lie about it. You know, every time I take the field, it's a proud moment for us as a, as a family. And you know, it's only credit to him how he's, how he's working and being patient and biding his time. You know, he's playing a few, few games in the academy, a few games in the reserves. So if he gets his nod this week, I'm sure I'll take it with both fans and every opportunity I get to play with my lad, it's, it's, it's a good one. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Cheers.